In this short video, we're going to go over some review topics that we'll need to understand to be able to work out problems with related rates. First thing we want to look at are similar triangles. Similar triangles mean that one triangle is an enlargement of the other. Uh, your corresponding angles are going to be congruent. And the thing that we're really going to make use of is that the lengths of corresponding sides are proportional. So if I took the length in the, of the middle length side in the tall triangle over its corresponding length on the smaller triangle, that's going to be the same as if I took the length of the longest side in the big triangle over the length of the longest side in the smaller triangle. And that will equal the length of the shortest side in the big triangle divided by the length of the uh, smallest side on the smaller triangle. Or I could reverse those fractions like I did down here. I could put the lengths of the smaller triangle on top and divide by the lengths of the larger triangle. But it's that ratio which is going to be the same. And when I make these ratios, I just have to remember to be consistent. If I put the lengths from the smaller triangle on top, and then in every other fraction, it has to be from the smaller triangle. So let's look at an example where we're going to make use of that. We've got a man, he's six feet tall. He's standing a certain distance away from a lamppost. That's what the blue line segment represents. And that lamppost or street light is 18 feet tall. And he's going to cast a shadow, which is eight feet long behind him. So let's go ahead and put those numbers on our diagram. Our diagram is going to guide our solution here because we'd like to find out how far is the man standing from the street light or from the lamppost. Well, uh, you can see that I have two similar triangles here. The smaller one is made by the man and his shadow and the beam of light going from his head down to the tip of the shadow. And the larger triangle is the street light, the ground all the way to the tip of the shadow, and then the beam of light that comes down and just touches the top of the shadow. So we've got two similar triangles there. We should be able to set up a proportion. And sure enough, if I think of the, the man here, his height is six. The corresponding height would be the height of the street light, which is 18. The base of the big triangle would have length of x plus eight, and the base of the small triangle would just be eight. So I can go ahead and solve this in any number of ways. I think the simplest way is to form the cross products here, set them equal to each other. I went ahead and divided each side by six and worked it out to find that he's uh, 16 feet from the street light. We'll need to know area formulas, not uh, all, all of them, but quite a few. Of course, we need to know the area of a rectangle. I don't even put that here. But the area of a triangle is half base times height. Area of a trapezoid is going to be 1 half the height times a plus b. For the full circle, it's pi r squared. A fraction of the circle, so we call that a sector. Uh, we just take a central angle of theta. And uh, we can work this out starting from the area of the circle, provided that theta must be in radians. So the area of the sector is 1 half theta r squared. 1 half theta r squared. 
Now, talking about radians, if we go back to our triangle, if we have an angle theta and we uh, call one of the sides A, the other side B, then we can also use trig to calculate the area uh, because uh, we can use the formula one half AB sine theta. And that's really just because from triangle trigonometry, the value of H would be uh, A times sine of theta. We want to know volumes of some basic shapes. So for example, for a cylinder of radius r and height h, it's going to be pi r squared h. Cylinder is actually a special example of a prism. A prism always has the same uh, cross-sectional area. Uh, and so here in my example, I have a triangle and so I just, no matter what the base is, I just calculate the area of the base and multiply it times the height. So uh, if I can derive or have a formula for the area of the base, like I do with the cylinder, it's pi r squared, then I multiply it times the height. A pyramid is actually one third of a prism. You can fit three pyramids inside the same volume of a prism. So the volume of a pyramid is one third times the area of the base times the height. And we look at the cone as a special example of that. So its formula would be one third pi r squared times h, since its base is a circle. And finally, quick review of triangle trigonometry. The key is that when we're working with triangle trigonometry in calculus, we should always use radians. So for basic triangle, you have uh, an angle theta, the adjacent side, the opposite side, and the hypotenuse. And we are all familiar of these. If we ever need a reminder, a lot of people learn the little phrase, so, ka, and toa. And these little sing-songy phrases, for one reason or another, seem to be easy to remember. So, so, ka, toa, sine is opposite of hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. And then we may need to use the reciprocals. So cosecant is one over sine, so that would be hypotenuse over opposite. Secant is one over cosine, so that would be hypotenuse over adjacent. And cotangent is one over tangent, and so that would be adjacent over opposite.